Hi guys, welcome to the second video in chapter 11. This video is going to be all about intermolecular forces within different molecules. So the first thing that is important to know is the difference between inter and intramolecular forces. Intramolecular forces are the bonds that exist within a molecule. So again, intra exists within. Um, so these are the bonds. So ionic bonds, metallic bonds, covalent bonds. Um, these are what you have to break in order to actually separate a compound into its elements. So for example, for water, okay, if we have H2O, intramolecular forces would be these bonds right here, these covalent bonds. Um, intramolecular forces are much stronger than intermolecular forces, and the intramolecular forces are what give all of the different molecules their specific chemical properties. Then we have intermolecular forces. So these are attractions between molecules. So a lot of times you'll see it represented as, as a dotted line because it's simply an attraction. Um, intermolecular forces um, give the molecules their specific physical properties. So um, like boiling point, melting point, viscosity, surface tension. Um, intermolecular forces are also what has to be overcome to change states of matter. So because intermolecular forces are weaker than intramolecular forces, it's easier, for example, to take a sample of water and boil it. Right? When we put energy in to a sample of liquid water and we boil it, that's overcoming intermolecular forces. You would have to put a lot more energy in to overcome those intramolecular forces, those covalent bonds. So intermolecular forces um, are the attractions that you have to overcome to change states of matter. So then different types of intermolecular forces. This is from weakest to strongest. So we have dispersion or London forces. They're called either one, so you need to know both names. Dipole-dipole forces. And then hydrogen bonding, which is a special type of dipole-dipole. Then we have ion-dipole forces. And so the first two types, dispersion and dipole-dipole, which also would incorporate the hydrogen bonding, these are called collectively as van der Waals forces. Um, named after Van der Waal, who talked about the deviation of real gases from ideal behavior. Um, so dispersion, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding are all called Van der Waals forces. So the first type of intermolecular force is the dispersion force. Um, dispersion forces exist between nonpolar molecules, so typically the halogens and the noble gases. Um, and in order for dispersion force to exist, we have to create what's called an instantaneous dipole. Um, in an instantaneous dipole, the electrons just shift to one side of an atom. Um, it's temporary. It is not permanent like in a polar molecule. And so we're going to look at these helium atoms, for example. So in any helium atom, you have an average distribution of electrons. Um, it, there's just where the electrons are at any given time. Um, you can take snapshots for the instantaneous distribution, though. Notice the electrons are spread out in these first two drawings. Then notice in this middle diagram, in atom B, the electrons are on the same side of the atom. Uh, what that means when they move to one side of the atom is they've created an instantaneous dipole. At that instant, this left side of the atom is negatively charged and the right side is positively charged. And that's what this polarization view shows. So notice now atom B has a partial negative and a partial positive side. And what happens as it gets close to other atoms or other molecules this creates instantaneous dipoles in the other atoms because if the electrons are on the left side, they're going to repel the electrons in atom A, and then that creates a partial negative and a partial positive side. This attractive interaction right here in this, in this right diagram, this is a dispersion force. Now, it's important to know that dispersion forces only exist when atoms or molecules are very close together. Because if these two helium atoms would be really far apart, then those electrons wouldn't repel the electrons in the other atom as much. 
So the dispersion forces only occur when the atoms are close together. Now, the strength of these dispersion forces, which are present in all substances, are based on the polarizability of the electrons. Now, what it means by polarizability is, how can you move this electron cloud around? Well, the more electrons you have, the easier it is to take a quick snapshot and more electrons be on one side of the atom. So dispersion forces are related to the total number of electrons in a, an atom or a molecule. Um, a larger molar mass indicates more electrons, but when you're justifying your answers, you have to talk about total number of electrons and not just molar mass. So these stronger dispersion forces occur when the electrons are able to form this instantaneous dipole easier. Well, the more electrons there are, the easier it is for you to have a partial negative on one side. And so the larger number of electrons, the more polarizable and the stronger dispersion forces. The larger surface area, then what that means is it's able to actually um, attract at a variety of locations when you have a, a larger surface area. And so that means it's also more polarizable and you have stronger dispersion forces and then typically when you have pi bonds, it's more polarizable. Now again, these dispersion forces are present in every single substance. Whether it's polar, nonpolar, ionic, they always have dispersion forces. So with polarizability and boiling point, um, as I said, the more electrons means the stronger the dispersion force. Now, remember that these intermolecular forces are what keep solids together, liquids together, gases together. So when you have stronger dispersion forces, you have to put more energy in to melt it or to boil it. And so the stronger the dispersion force, the higher the melting point and the boiling point. So if you take a look at these halogens, notice as you go down the halogen group, Okay, well, you have more electrons as you go down, and your molar or your um, your molar mass increases. But that just means that your electrons increase, your melting point increases, and your boiling point increases. So again, the higher molar mass is because you have more charged particles. The more charged particles you have, the more attraction there are between the molecules. Um, and so the reason is charged particles, not molar mass. But you can determine these strengths by molar mass um, because that's equal to the same number of electrons. So some factors that affect dispersion forces. Um, the shape is one. So the shape of a molecule will affect the strength of the dispersion forces. Um, the attractions will be greater in a long cylindrical molecule than in a short fat one. Um, and that's because in a long skinny molecule, okay, like n-pentane up here, um, you have a larger surface area. Notice that you could have attraction a lot more around this long skinny molecule than this short fat one. A okay, neopentane is more spherical, which means there isn't as much contact on this molecule as on n-pentane. So the longer skinnier molecules have stronger dispersion forces um, because it has more surface area. Okay, so that was all with dispersion forces. The big thing to remember is they exist in all molecules, um, but they, they're the strongest forces in nonpolar molecules. Um, now we're going to look at um, the next strongest, which is dipole-dipole. But to review, we're going to look at what a dipole is. So a dipole is just a molecule that has a partial negative end and a partial positive end. Okay, these are permanent dipoles. They're not instantaneous. Um, the dipole moment is just a measure of the separation in the positive and negative. Um, and the larger the electronegativity difference, the larger the dipole moment, and the more polar the molecule. So with dipole-dipole forces, um, these are only found between molecules that are polar. So if you have a polar molecule, you will have dipole-dipole forces. Um, and that's because these polar molecules have these permanent dipoles and the oppositely charged ends attract each other.
And so this just gives you an example down here. It shows the attraction between the partially negative. Remember, the arrow points to the more negative side. So partially negative side is attracted to the partially positive side. Notice it's not a bond. It's just an attraction. Um, dipole forces are stronger than dispersion. Um, and the strength of the dipole-dipole force is related to the polarity. So the more polar the molecule, the stronger the dipole-dipole force is. So this is just looking at a particle diagram. Um, you can see the attractive forces um, are going from a blue molecule to the white-gray end. Uh, the repulsive forces, notice the blue ends of both molecules, will repel because they're like charges. Um, so with these dipole-dipole interactions, um, the more polar the molecule, okay, the stronger the dipole-dipole forces, and the higher its boiling point. So all of these intermolecular forces are always going to come back to physical properties. So the more polar the molecule, okay, the stronger the dipole-dipole force. That means you have a stronger attraction between the molecules, which means you have to put in more energy in order to get uh, whatever the sample is from liquid to gas. So the more polar, the higher its boiling point. Okay, so um, now we have this trend. Um, and this is in your book. Um, notice that this shows uh, hydrogen bonded to a variety of, of atoms. Um, you have hydrogen with group 4A, hydrogen with 5A, 6A, and 7A. Um, notice that the 4A group, right, it goes from the smallest to the largest and boiling point increases, which is what we expect because dispersion forces increase with increasing molar mass because we also have increasing number of, of electrons. But notice that NH3, HF, and H2O um, spike with their boiling points. This doesn't follow the trend. So why, why do we have this on here? Well, it's because of hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is a special form of a dipole-dipole force. It is not a bond. Okay, hydrogen bonding is not a bond. It is an attraction. Notice over here, there's a difference between the covalent bond and the hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is a dotted line because it's simply an attraction. It is the strongest type of dipole force. Um, and it only occurs when molecules have a very uh, electronegative element attached to a hydrogen. So you have to have hydrogen bonded to NO or F. So you can remember HNOF. Um, and then what happens is a hydrogen from another molecule is attracted to the partially negative side of that molecule. So... The covalent bonds are the intramolecular. The hydrogen bonds are the intermolecular. So here are just some examples of hydrogen bonding. Notice that the hydrogen is attracted to the um, lone pairs on the partially negative side of the atom. Um, hydrogen bonding is actually the reason for some unique properties of water. Um, the main one being that ice is less dense than liquid water. Um, typically, solids are significantly more dense than, than the liquid. However, because water hydrogen bonds, it creates these hexagonal um, packing spaces. And what happens is you have all of this empty space in here. Well, all of this empty space, it's not filled by anything. And so you have this, this sample of water and it expands as it freezes and it becomes less dense, which is why ice floats on, you know, on lakes and on rivers. Um, so water tends to be an exception to a lot of all of the properties of liquids um, because of hydrogen bonding. So looking at this data, um, the reason that water, HF, and ammonia are so much higher than the rest is because of hydrogen bonding. Because hydrogen bonding is the strongest type of dipole force it's going to take significantly more energy in order to boil that sample, in order to overcome those intermolecular forces. So the last type of force that we're going to look at is the ion-dipole force. Um, this is an attraction between an ion 
and um, the partial charge of a polar molecule. So typically it's going to be between an ion and water. It's not really an intermolecular force because there's more than one substance involved, but it's extremely important when we talk about aqueous solutions. Um, this is what makes it possible for us to dissolve ionic compounds in polar solvents. For example, NaCl. So here's the particle view of NaCl. Notice that you have Cl- and Na+, and they've been pulled apart. Well, they've been pulled apart because of the water molecules. And what happens is the partial positive side of the water, so the hydrogens, are actually attracted to the negative chlorine atom. And then we have, with sodium, the partially negative sides of the water, so the oxygens, are actually attracted to the sodium ion. And this actually will pull the ionic compound apart, and this is called a solvent cage and the waters come around. Notice there's six waters around each one, um, and that's what allows uh, ionic compounds to dissolve. So ionic bonds, um, these are only found between positive and negative ions and an ionic compound. Um, remember, ionic compounds are, typically exist in a crystal lattice, um, a very arranged um, structure with the ions in specific points. Um, these have to have full positive and full negative charges uh, for it to be an ionic compound. So this is just a flow chart if you're a visual person um, that will allow you to actually look through, figure out if it's ionic, if it's covalent, and then going down through hydrogen bonding, um, dipole-dipole, all of the, the different intermolecular forces. Um, here is another one that is in your book. Um, notice down here it gives you the increasing strength. So dispersion is the weakest, then dipole-dipole, then hydrogen bonding, then ion dipole, then ionic bonding. Now you'd also want to put um, covalent and metallic bonds. Those are right here, right? Those are stronger than um, any of the intermolecular forces. Not as strong as ionic, um, but covalent and metallic should go into here as well. So comparing intermolecular forces. Um, dispersion forces are found in all substances. No matter what the substance is, you always have dispersion forces. Um, the strength of dispersion forces depends on the shape um, and the number of electrons. Dipole-dipole forces um, just add to the effect of dispersion. Um, they are only found in polar molecules. So you can only have dipole-dipole forces if you have a polar molecule. Um, hydrogen bonding is a stronger special case of dipole-dipole. And it only happens when you have H NOF, right? H N O or F. Um, and then ion dipole and ionic bonding are only possible when you have ions. Um, ion dipole is stronger than hydrogen. Ionic is the strongest of all. Um, so in general, ionic is the strongest, dispersion is the weakest. But keep in mind there's always the exceptions.